Hi, welcome to the Angler's Diary and Northwest Carp Fishing Blog. I'm back on the Shops Union Canal again and it's winter time, so it's time to do some low fishing for pike and perch. During last winter's low fishing, I was asked about the gear I use, so I thought for my first part this year, I'd take you through what I've got and why I've got it. So without further ado, this is my gear, let's take a look. Okay, first up is the rod. This is an ultralight rod, the one I use most of the time. Now, you can get all kinds of ultralight rods and some of them are really quite expensive. This one's reasonably cheap, it cost me just over 30 quid. It's a HTO rockfish. It's actually meant for bass fishing off the rocks, but it lends itself perfectly for law fishing for perch with small little rubber laws, which you saw me doing a lot of last year. It's a HTO rockfish L and it's weight rated 3 to 10 grams so it casts really light weights it's seven and a half foot long it's got a lovely white tip for spotting bites the eyes are well whipped and it's a lovely light rod okay so the reel nice light rod the reel is a Shimano Katana model 2500 FC they're only cheap, uh, this one was under 30 quid. Uh, it's ideal for low fishing, it's nice and light. Shimano have probably got the best clutches in the world on their reels, so it's got a lovely nice clutch, nice and smooth. Uh, it's small, light, and works a treat. So altogether, the rod and the reel come to about 60 quid. 70 quid tops, it's not expensive, considering you can spend well over 100 pound on just the rod alone. It's a nice cheap setup and it, it does me down to the ground. Okay, so the other rod I carry with me is a Savage Gear Bushwhacker. Uh, this is quite a big rod. It's eight foot six inches and weight rated to 60 gram weights. So it, it's 20 to 60 grams on the size of the laws. So it'll cast laws up to over two ounces, getting on for three ounces. That's a nice big meaty rod. Uh, I usually keep this folded up and I strap it with the bungees to me to my rucksack and I carry it on my back so it's not in the way. Uh, it's a lovely rod. It cost me about 60 quid this one, so I'll push the boat out with it. Not like me to spend that kind of money. <laughs> uh, the reel is an Abu, Abu Garcia. Uh, model number 5601. It's a lovely small little multiplier. Uh, great for casting, nice and light, well balanced setup this one. Uh, the braid on the reel is £30 Power Pro and on the ultralight rod it's £18 Power Pro so I've got Power Pro braid on both rods. Nice little rod this. The reason I carry two setups is because one's for ultralights, little tiny rubber laws for perch. This is an out and out pike setup this one and you'll see me using that a bit this winter. Right. Now you've seen both my rods. Let's take a look in my bag. Now my bag. I have a couple of bungee straps on to keep everything in place. And as you can see, my landing net and my unhooking mat are bungee to the back. The unhooking mat's just a chub, flat mat from my carp fishing. I've pinched it and moved it over. The law net is a Savage Gear law net. Uh, it folds up, nice and light. Uh, I pinch this to use it for me barbel fishing as well, like it's a cracking net. Rubber mesh, so the laws don't get stuck in it. And it's extendable. Obviously, yeah, I can virtually put this together with one hand while I'm playing a fish. So I generally leave it folded in the mat unless I need it. And then I can go looking for it. So that's my Savage Gear law net. And my looking mat. and they fit on the back of my bag. Right, let's have a look in the bag. Right. Now you've seen both my rods, let's take a look in my bag. Okay, so my bag is just a rucksack, pinched from my carp fishing. This is a small Nash H gun, which I bought second hand. And it cost me about 15 quid, something like that, 15, 20 quid. Inside, I have two law boxes, as you can see. Now my first box, a small one, that's just 
the box itself is from a DIY shop. Costs a couple of quid and it works the trees. Now, you saw me using these types of laws a lot last winter and uh, this whole box is dedicated to them, this little box. So, that's one law box. The other is a much bigger one and there's some meaty sized laws in this one. Um, let's open it up. On top are my trace wires. This stuff is called Not Too Kinky. I don't know whether you can see that. Nickel Titanium Trace Wire. Um, it's a, a wire that's knottable and that's the knotter used for it. You can see that. It's called a clinch knot. And uh, this does all my traces. Got it in different braking strains. This one's £12, this one's 6 for the ultralights. £12, a bit heavier. And because it comes in bags like this, I generally tend to lay them on top so they don't get damaged. Okay, so inside are various laws. There's a Savage Gear real eel, complete with a stinger on it. Lovely law, that one. And um, we've got different sizes of Savage Gear 4 plays, again rubber laws. Um, I've got quite a few Rapalas. Unfortunately I've mixed them all together so we have a tendency of uh, getting stuck. That's one you've seen me use a lot, Rapala Shad Wrap. You'll see me use that again this winter because it's an absolute cracker. I've also got Rapala X wraps and uh, another shad wrap in a different colour. That particular one is blue. Um, there are some other interesting things in here as well. That's a Shakespeare big ass. They don't make these anymore. Um, I stopped making them a long time ago. Uh, I've also got a Shakespeare little less. And like floating law that dives when you when you crank it, got bite marks all over that one. I think I caught my first pike on that in 1983 from Birkenhead Park Lake. That's how old it is. So that that's a 30 year old law that one. And it's still in my box today. That shows you how good it is. Right. Um, also in here, Savage Gear Four Play, big trout with the lip skull on it. Uh, you'll see me using that on the river this winter, another good law. This is an interesting device, a crook from Savage Gear. It's actually for twisting wire tracers. So you you've, uh, put your trace wire through your swivel, heat the end of it with a lighter and then you can twist your trace up instead of crimping it. And it's really strong and works really well. Uh, also, this is a, like a crochet needle tool that you can use for pulling wire through through rubber laws because people rig them in different ways and that's a dual tool that one so uh, it works really well and uh, always handy to have in the box in case you want to rig a law a different way uh, what else have we got spinners that particular one's a MEPS Aglia size 4 um, I've also got some MEPS Comets these are cracking spinners these, that's a size 2 uh, for perch, little small one. Uh, a size 5 is a really big ones are good for pike. I used to have a couple of those in here but I've lost them both and haven't replaced them yet. But uh, the MEPS Comet spinner is really good. Uh, I've got various tracers, um, curly tail grubs, what they call swirl tails. Um, more trace wire and fox that one. More grubs, slightly bigger. Curly tails again, these are I think two and a half, three inch. They're motor oil red. I've got them in black and yellow, all kinds of other colours. 
Um, ah, here's an interesting one as well. You don't see these used very often these days. I can get it out. A spoon. That's an Abu Toby spoon. Roach imitation. That's done me well on the River Dee in the past. It just glints in the water as you wind it in. And uh, I've had that snaffled by a few pike on the river in years gone by. Again, I don't think that's seen the light of day in 20 years, but it's still in my box because you never know when you're going to need something like that. Uh, some small floating rapalas. Very small rapalas for perch fishing. There's actually two here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's a nice little law. Only about two inches long. But again, it rattles as well. Got a little rattle in it, and so is this one as well. Small. Two inches. Ideal for perch. And apart from all this, I have some trace wire. Uh, lots of wire traces in here. Already made up, so I, you know, if I lose one or anything like that, I can come, just come straight into here, all in a little compartment wound up. I can just get another trace out and be fishing straight away. So, that's my big law box. Now, apart from my two boxes, uh, there are other stuff in my bag. So, let's go through the pockets and see what we've got. Scales. Unlike modern law anglers who measure their fish, I weigh mine. I'm old school. So, I'll always have a pair of scales with me. Various unhooking tools in here. All sorts, in fact. Heavy duty snips. Not just strong enough to snip wire, strong enough to snip hooks as well. Because if you get a hook that's really, really stuck and you can't get it out, sometimes the best way is to snip it and pass it through. So they're really heavy duty pliers, them. Small pair of pliers. Again, very useful for getting hooks out. Uh, standard size pair of forceps. A long pair of forceps. Because you never know how far down those hooks are going to go. Uh, again, long nose pliers. Really, really long so you can get in there and really get a hold if you need to. Uh, they're ideal. And this is an interesting device. This is called a hook out. It's given to me by uh, one of the lads from the EA. This Steve. Thanks, Steve if you're watching and what it is it's like a trigger and you hold it and you can see the end there you, you press it together and get a grip and you can really you can get down right deep in the pike's throat and you can grab the treble and get it out just another another thing to use besides the pliers and uh, I carry all of these as you can see in the front packet of my bag See what else is in here. In the side pocket, a packet of Savage Gear real eels in Fire Tiger. Cracking laws, these. I always carry a few spares with me as well, besides the one that's in the box. You never know if you're going to lose it. I've got other spares in the house as well, but I try to keep the weight down on what I'm using, what I'm bringing with me. So, again, if you look on the back of these, Instructions on how to rig it, dead straightforward. I use a jig head and a stinger. Uh, other people, um, they put wire through it and go through it with the Savage Gear tool that you saw before, so they've got wire running through it. Uh, I like the jig, the jig head and the stinger myself. So, real eels. And last but not least, in the other side, in the bottom one, Extra trace wire, Drennan 7 strand, £20 that one. 
I've had that for donkey's years. It used to be my preferred trace, but I've got Fox and uh, switched over to the nickel titanium now, but that's still good stuff. And the last bag is the goodie bag. In here we have Crazy Fish Nano Minnows. They're ideal for drop shotting or fished on a jig head. Um, same with the Vibro Worms. They've actually impregnated with squid flavour, both of these. Uh, these are a recent addition and I'll be using these this winter. Uh, this bag has all sorts in it. It's got bags of laws, rubber laws, they're copy twos. Um, lots of different jig heads in different sizes and weights for ultra lighting. Uh, generally keep it all in a bag like this. There is absolutely, literally there's loads of stuff in there. And uh, it goes in a bag which you keep in here. And if you need any spares you can get some. Uh, also in here, wire cutters and I never leave home without these glasses. These are three times magnification. You get them from news agents and places like that, they're about three quid. Uh, they're not prescription, but for being on the bank and tying knots, these are absolutely brilliant. It's like putting a pair of magnifiers on and uh, I always carry them with me everywhere. I've got some in my carp fishing gear, kit as well. I've got a pair in the car. Three or four quid from a news agent's brilliant. Also in here, sunglasses. Um, if the water's nice and clear, it's best wear a pair of these so you can see what's going on. It takes the glare off the water. On the Shops Union Canal, it's chocolate coloured, shall we say. So you won't have seen me wearing these yet, but I always carry them in my bag just in case. If I go on the river, I'll certainly be wearing these. So there you go, a couple of pairs of glasses, your goodie bag full of stuff, and a few crazy fish laws. And that's the other pocket. And that's about it, really. Everything else I've got is at home. Uh, I try to carry as little with me as possible. Um, as far as I'm concerned, what I've got here is too much, and if I could cut it down, I would. And over the coming weeks and months, I probably will, to be honest. Uh, right, that's it for me gear anyway. Um, coming up, I did say this was going to be a five part series. This is the first one. I'm also going to cover law fishing in coloured water, uh, the type of laws I use, and how I manage to get fish out in water that's chocolate coloured, like the Shropshire Union. Um, I'll come back to that in more detail. We're going to catch a pike from the River Dee. We're going to have a look at the River Dee. Um, we're also going to try another canal besides this one. Um, I've got a couple within reaching distance of my place. Um, the Trenton Mersey is looking favourite at the moment and the Bridgewater. Both have less boat traffic than this, so they will be a little bit clearer. So uh, that's all coming up in future episodes. I uh, hope you've enjoyed a little look through my gear. It's not expensive, not spectacular, not even fashionable, but you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you put your lure in the right place, you'll catch, and this gear does me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.